Hi everyone, I'm Julie Cephalou from The Crafty Quilter. Today I'm going to show you how to make my versatile face mask pattern. This face mask is a more contoured fit to your face type of mask and it's got a lot of great options built into it. Uh, the one that I have right here hanging around my neck um, has a wire built into the, the nose area so that it can fit and contour to your nose and right underneath your eyes. Um, there are different ways that you can tie it to your head. I've got some options that I'll show you later on. Um, mine has one long tie, so it just goes around the back of my neck without having to tie it. And then I'll tie it to the back of my head. On the inside, there is a little opening here so that you can fit an optional filter in there if you wanted. Um, there's also different ways that you could do the ties. You could um, use elastic and just make ear loops or even hair ties so that you loop it around your ears instead of tying it around your head. Um, this one right here, put it on for you. I just take these ties and tie it right to the top of my head and I really like the way this fits to my face and and I like the way this one just has the one tie. Get my glasses in here and then yeah just kind of fit that down around your nose and here's what the sides look like. It's a nice comfortable mask and we are going to make one today. I hope you enjoy making it. So let's get to it. The supplies you'll need to make one face mask are the printed pattern available at thecraftyquilter.com and I've linked to that below. You'll need scissors and pinking shears, those are optional. You can also use a rotary cutter. You'll need 100% cotton fabric in two prints. The tighter the weave, the better. You could also use fabric from a pillowcase or a t-shirt. And then you'll want coordinating thread. Options for the ties are a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch wide grosgrain ribbon, or you can use ties made from fabric, or for ear loops, you can use a quarter inch wide elastic, or you can use hair ties. Optional nose wire material include pipe cleaners that you can find at the craft store, florist wire, gardening wire, twist ties or a paper clip would even work. Make sure the pattern has been printed out at the correct size by measuring the one inch square. Cut the inner and outer face mask pieces on the solid lines. A quarter inch seam allowance has been included. I want to mention that this mask fits an average adult profile. You can adjust it by increasing or decreasing the pattern before printing, or even better, you can watch a YouTube video by Gail Colmar where she shows you how to resize a face mask for a custom fit. It's an excellent video and I'll link to that below as well. Fold the fabric with right sides together. If your fabric is directional, such as the ice cream fabric that I'm using, make sure to place the pattern so that it's facing the right direction. Use pins to hold the pattern in place while you cut around the outside. Or you could trace the pattern onto your fabric and then cut. You can also use a rotary cutter for this step. Next, you're going to trace the solid casing line onto the wrong side of the outer mask pieces. Use a fabric pencil or other marking tool to draw a line that's one and a half inches from the short edge as shown on the pattern. Before we start sewing, let's talk about the machine setup for a quarter inch seam allowance. I have a quarter inch piecing foot which allows me to use the edge of the foot as my seam allowance guide because it's a quarter inch from the center, center needle position to the edge of the presser foot. You can also see that I have tape in front of my feed dogs on the bed of my machine. This is called diagonal seam tape and it's a, got a red line to show the center needle position and a black line on either side of that which is a quarter inch away. It's a great guide for your quarter inch seam allowance. If you have just a regular presser foot, you may be able to adjust your needle position to the right so that it falls a quarter inch from the edge of your presser foot. Now we're going to sew the center seam. Your pieces need to be right sides together and we're going to start at the top without needing to backstitch here. And you're going to continue along the curved edge 
gently guiding it to maintain the proper seam allowance. At the end of this piece, you can stitch right off the edge and then feed the next piece under your presser foot. This is called chain piecing and it's a really fast and efficient way to sew. When you're done sewing, you just snip the threads between the two pieces. To reduce the bulk along the center seam, you can use pinking shears and cut along the seam allowance edge. If you don't have pinking shears, you can cut notches into the seam allowance, and these are little triangles. They're spaced about a half inch apart along the curved edge. You just gotta be careful not to cut into the seam stitches. On the inside face mask piece, you're going to turn under a quarter inch along the short sides and press. Then you'll stitch that in place close to the raw edge, which I forgot to do when I was filming the video. Now you're going to stitch the inner and outer face mask pieces together along the upper edge. With right sides together, match the center seams and nest them together by folding one seam to the left and the other to the right. Pin this intersection and then you'll pin the beginning and end as well. The inner face mask should fall at the casing lines that we drew in the beginning. You don't need to backstitch at the beginning or the end of this seam and you'll use a quarter inch seam allowance and just be careful when you're stitching around the curved edges. Take it nice and slow and pay attention when you're going over that center seam inter intersection. I like to remove the pins before stitching over them. When you're done with this, you're gonna do the same thing on the other bottom edge. Again, you need to match that center seam and pin it, and then start sewing. This edge is a little bit easier because there's no curves to it. It just goes straight on through. Now you need to trim an eighth of an inch from the seam allowance at the upper center edge to reduce the bulk. Next, you need to clip the curved part of the upper seam allowance to ease the fabric along this edge. Clip about a half inch apart, being careful not to cut into the stitches. Now you're gonna turn it right side out and use your fingers just to get all the edges pushed out along the seams. We're gonna press the edges of the face mask and you'll see along the sides that you'll need to extend the quarter inch seam allowance by folding the outer face mask edge in and press those edges in place. Next, we're going to top stitch along both the upper and bottom edges. This will keep the fabric from shifting. You're gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge and you'll notice that this stitching will show on the face mask. It's time to form the casing for the ear loops or ties. Turn under a quarter inch on the short sides of the outer face mask and press. Fold this edge again a 5 8 of an inch so that it meets the casing line that we drew earlier. Now that we've pressed the casing, I want to talk about a few options before we get to the sewing machine. If you want to add a nose wire, you'll need it need to sew a channel that's a quarter inch away from the top stitching just along the nose bridge area. I can show you more easily on my own mask. I start by sewing a quarter inch down and then pivot and continue sewing to the other side, which I leave open. You insert the nose wire from the side opening and feed it right into the channel that you've sewn. And I'll open this up just so you can see where that wire is. The wire I'm using is thin, so I'm gonna double it by folding it in half. I'm starting with a six and a half inch piece of wire, and I just fold it in half and crimp it. Then I add some electro electrical tape around the sharp ends to prevent it from poking through. A pipe cleaner can be used as well. These can be pretty flimsy though, so again, I like to double this and twist it together. And then also on these, you wanna fold the ends in about a quarter of an inch so it doesn't poke. 
Now we have some options for the ties which will affect how we sew the casing. So if you want ear loops and you're going to use hair ties, you need to insert the hair tie before sewing the casing closed. You could also cut a hair tie in half and sew it to the outside corners of the mask as shown in the inset picture. You can also use elastic for the ear loops. This can be inserted before sewing the casing but you can also feed it through after. The elastic is adjustable and you can fit it to your head before tying a knot in it. Next, we have ribbon ties. And for this option, you can sew the casing down first. We won't actually be using it to thread the ties through. The ribbon will be sewn onto each corner of the face mask. The length I'm using is 16 inches for the bottom neckties and 18 inches for the, for the top ties. I recommend not using satin ribbon because it can be too slippery. You can make your own ties from fabric. For this, you'll need to cut a two inch wide strip of fabric from selvage to, to selvage. That's about 42 to 44 inches long. You'll fold this in half along the length and press. Then fold the edges to meet the center fold and press. Then fold the whole piece in half again and stitch along the edge. This will give you a tie that is a half inch wide and you can cut it to the length you need. If you have a bias tape maker, you can use it here. Purple Hobbies has one that she made specifically for this and it's a little more streamlined and I've linked to that also. You can use just one long tie, thread it through the casing starting at the top of one side down to the bottom and bringing it up from the bottom of the other side. You can adjust the neck area by sliding the ties along the casing until it's the correct fit. For the hair tie option, you need to pin the casing around the hair tie before you start sewing. Start at the top near the folded edge and backstitch. Continue along the edge, carefully adjusting the fabric as you go and removing the pins. This can be a little tricky because it bunches up as you sew. Backstitch at the end. For all other options, you can just sew the casing edge down without inserting anything or even pinning. You just sew along the inside folded edge. Now we can sew the channel for the nose wire. You want to mark the fabric a one and a half inches from each side of the center seam, and I'm using a chalk pencil for this. Then you'll start stitching from the first mark straight down until you're a quarter inch past the top stitching. Pivot and continue to sew parallel to the top stitching until you reach the other mark, and then backstitch. To insert the nose wire, you feed it through the side opening into the open end of the nose channel. Guide it through the channel, and you may find some resistance when you reach the center seam. Just keep working at it until it pushes through. If you would like to insert an additional filter layer, you can do so. I'm using a blue shop towel because that's what I have on hand. I've flattened my face mask onto the shop towel and cut out the shape. Then I insert it from either side opening. This material is very soft and flexible, which makes it a slight challenge to get it into place. I've linked to additional filter materials in the notes below. And that's it. You have made a versatile, customizable face mask. Wear it and be safe.